Hey friends, join me for Girl Chat right now. While we have real life, real ministry moments, we're going to have some fun while we drink some coffee. Welcome to Prophetic Spiritual Warfare with Kathy DeGraw. In each episode, Kathy brings her passion and her gifts in strategic prophetic warfare to you so you can receive deliverance from what has blocked and bound you from experiencing your full destiny. So get ready to be set free and find peace and victory in your life. Kathy also wants to teach you and impart to you the same prophetic spiritual warfare ministry so you can use your gifts and skills to deliver others. Now, here's Kathy DeGraw. Hey friends, I want to welcome you back to the show. And as you can see, I got some friends with me. Hey ladies, welcome. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Great to be here. It is good to be here, isn't it? Yeah, just uh Yeah. We just got done recording a massive amount of shows. How's it feel? It feels awesome. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Just the amount good. of lives that will be changed from these videos. Amen. It's awesome. A good feeling. And it was an amazing experience personally for us as well. You know, it's 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 great to see that even as the Lord is using us to reach others, that he is reaching uh, us as well, reaching into our lives and doing a work in us as we are being used of him to help others. That yeah. is amazing. You know, I never thought growing up I would be used by God like this. You know, just, yeah. I mean, what about you guys? Did you ever envision or... Did you come never. from Christian? You know, I never. didn't come from a Christian home. I never thought it. No, I, I came. To, oh, I came to Christ late in life. Okay. So I never imagined it. We never went to church, except for on Easter, and I know you guys heard that before. A lot of people say we go on Easter, we go on Christmas. Yeah, that's kind of how I was right. too. You know, that Christmas, Easter, <laughs> and yeah, it just wasn't. And I don't know. I was just like, I'm always amazed. I think like even though we didn't think we'd be used, you know, by God like this, how everything that we do in our life and our childhood really does prepare us, even the good and the bad, you know. I was just thinking about, like, you know, I'm sitting here trying to help people get physically healthy and healed, you know, physically in their body. I'm not talking about, you know, the demonic deliverance at this point. And I look at over my life, and I'm like, man, I was just, like, so tormented by medical and health stuff yes. and you know to see god using me this way i would have never imagined yeah. it there's a purpose for everything like i look back on my life and since you know joining your ministry i look back at my childhood and i can see the places that the lord was intervening and um, not even realizing of course then what he was doing but looking back now the people that he brought in and that really kind of helped me along the way to get where I am now. It's amazing. Yeah. And even like, you know, something simple like traveling and vacationing. I've always loved to vacation. And now I get to travel for ministry. I mean, awesome. like, doesn't he like plant yeah. those seeds? Yeah. I think I've done more traveling in the last two years. <laughs> I, no, that's, I have done more traveling in the last two years than I've done in my whole life. Yeah. And it's been fun. Oh, yeah. It's fun. Yeah, he's so great that way that we don't look at all of those as like, I want to say like stepping stones or building blocks, you know, because like when you live a life on the road, oh, yeah. you got to love to travel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, you need, it. you need it. And I think we tend to forget that he uses everything. He does. Yes. From young to old. I mean, he uses it all. So it's nothing to waste. Nothing goes to waste in the kingdom. So. Yeah, it's yes. been so, fun also meeting people through through this from all uh, over the uh, country too. Okay. You get to meet people from yes. all over. Mm -hmm. That's been different. my friend used to say. Every time you meet someone, you meet a piece of Jesus, because That's so true. Everyone has, you know, Jesus, a part of Jesus in them, yes. and so every time you meet someone else, and she would go in with like this um anticipation this childlike faith and be like this person has a piece of Jesus that I get to know and mm -hmm. and understand and, and live and I think you know that was like such a awesome creative way of, of looking at people because let's face it there's some of those people that we don't always see Jesus right. in exactly yes yes yes, yes. 
It's been um, it's been awesome. Like you were saying earlier, how God uses everything from our childhood. Before we got on the set, I was sharing, um, you know, with um, my friends, some of my friends here, how as a as a child, I was a very very quiet, very very shy, very very soft spoken, and hardly spoke any words. And to see that you know that the Lord would use me along with ministers like this to actually bring the spoken word of God. Um, it, it's, it's supernatural. It is supernatural. And uh, just so blessed to see what God can do in our lives as he's using us to bless others as well. Yeah. Definitely. When you were telling that story off set and stuff, I was like, I didn't tell you, but I wasn't as shy as you were. But I remember early on in my marriage, I would literally, like, when my husband introduced me to someone, I'd be, like, three to four f feet back behind him, and I would just always be, like, you know, just really shy and timid, and, you know, I was, like, just staying back, and now look at me. I'm in the, know, know. the yeah. forefront. No. Yes. I Isn't it was the same way? But being here, you've pulled that out of me, oh, and yes. that has been probably the toughest thing. Is oh, really? To get out of that, yes. you know? trying to shy away and really coming into who you are. Like, don't be afraid, be you. Yes. You know, everyone else is taken. That's what Kathy says all the yes, time. That's right. And so, yeah, that's been powerful. Yes. yes. And it's just so beautiful to have a, a coach and a mentor that stretches you and just yes. the Lord uses to to bring out the the gold, the diamonds, yes. you know, that's already inside of us mm -hmm. that we didn't even realize, no. you know, uh, that and sometimes the gold and the diamond is mixed with dirt. <laughs> and it has to be purified, you know, Under brought some out. Heat, yeah. pressed heat, down. That's right. Shaken together. That's right. Some pressure, some discomfort. And sometimes we're screaming through it. <laughs> like, oh, Lord, deliver me from this. Yeah. Where while the Lord is refining us and yeah. what comes out of it is, is just pure beauty. Yeah. One of the things that gave me kind of that passion is years ago, I led a kids club at one of the churches my husband served and we were out in the country and a lot of these kids had never experienced simple things like frosting a sugar cookie at Christmas time or wrapping a present, um, you know, just simple science experiments or crafts or even kind of everyday life skills. And as I was the leader of that group, you know, I started being like, okay, you know, let's do a frosted cookie or we'd go to the dollar store and buy all their um, family presents and let them wrap them. And I was like so passionate about, I want to teach people something new. I want to give them an experience they haven't. And if I can make it easier for the next person, that's kind of been, you know, just a passion. And so when I think about discipleship and think about pulling this out, I think it's just been birthed in me for a while just to help it make it easier for the next person. And it's amazing how God has used your ministry to pull it out of us. A lot of deliverance ministers, they don't have the time to disciple. They they have the time, but they they get I think they get caught up in growing their ministry so big that they don't take the time to disciple others like they should. And, yeah, and it's so needed because, yeah. I mean, we are they're supposed to disciple. Yeah, just slowing down. Yeah. I think it's slowing down yeah, and, absolutely. and breathing and getting rid of the busyness and getting into, you know, godliness. Mm -hmm. But friends, I hope you're enjoying our chat. We're going to come back after this break and continue our coffee time. Kathy DeGraw's passion is to help you receive your own deliverance and then train and equip you to minister that same deliverance to others. Go to KathyDeGrawMinistries.org to find her breakthrough books, e-courses, weekly podcasts, unique anointing oils, her intense discipleship platform, and more. You can also enroll in Kathy's membership and mentorship programs that are tailored to meet your specific needs. And don't forget to download your free declaration e-book at KathyDeGrawMinistries.org slash PSW. Welcome back to my girl chat. You know, girls, I was just thinking, I'm a, you know, you're all here because you love deliverance ministry and 
You love getting trained by it. But you know one of the things I struggle with? My extended family doesn't even know what I do. You know? That's really hard sometimes Mm -hmm. when you can save and deliver the world. And you can't deliver, you know, your parents or or siblings or something. Right. You know, have you ever been in that situation that... Absolutely. That is something that gets to me every day, but I just continue to stay in faith. I mean, you know, we can't change them until they're ready to change. We can be that um, representation of Jesus and try to be like Jesus when we're around him. I know you've given us good um, guidance you know, praying before we go see them and stuff. and But that's something that I'm challenged with a lot. Yeah, because you just, you you want them. It's like you see their flaws more yes. than, yeah. you know, the world because you're with your family and, yeah, and stuff exactly. like that. You see their flaws mm-hmm. and yes. you want to help them. And I, I remember, you know, it was, it was so hard sometimes to go over there for Christmas or, you know, different things because, Sometimes you're seeing into the spiritual realm, but sometimes you're just feeling, you know, just such a burden in your heart. And for a while, I have to confess, you know, I'd put my iPod in my back pocket and run my earbuds (laughs) off my shirt and, you know, kind of put it in because I needed some music because I just felt like, you know, the spiritual climate wasn't as, you know, what I was accustomed to and and the presence of of God. And I don't let it weigh me down, but, you know, I just, I think it's something that maybe some of our viewers face too. You know, you want to be a deliverance minister or, you know, help your family, but you just can't. Yes. Yeah. It's so, I just, you know, wonder, it is very tough, you know, where, because they know you, you know, if they're parents, they gave birth to you. So they, you know, they put the diapers on, sent you to kindergarten and they know every part of you. So they're like, Oh, isn't that, yeah, that's little Jane, you know, we know everything about her. And and so the things you know, we share, I mean, I have that as well, where it is the most difficult people to connect with will be family members that are not on the same spiritual level. And you, know, you communicate and they don't see it. Yeah. They just don't see it. It just kind of reminds me of Jesus, you know. That that's right. Oh, that's, oh, that's so good. Where, you know, it's like, they got offended by him. Oh, yes. Like, I know Jesus. Isn't that Mary's son? We play around on the playground. <laughs> That's Jesus. We were in the playground together. Yeah. And now he's the son of God. Can, can, he's out of his mind. If I'm thinking. Like, what got into him? You know, this te- you know, he went through his teenage years and they knew him. And, um, and it was hard. And even, you know, Jesus said, you know, he couldn't do many mighty things in his own hometown. Yeah, right? that's true. And even it wasn't until after his death, I believe in the scriptures, that his brother, James, afterwards said, oh, I now see, <laughs> after Jesus had risen, died and risen. And it's just, uh, so I just kind of wonder. It, it, I think we just need grace, you know, like mm-hmm. you know, we're saying. Yeah. Yes. Just to know grace. that the Lord will reach them. Maybe he'll send other people yes. to them outside of us. Yeah, Christ. and you know what I do? Because it, it seems like, I don't know about you guys, but like, so often when your parents age, what do they talk about? Their health ailments, their medical yeah. problems and, medication. you know, medications, <laughs> yeah. going to the doctor. We got this doctor appointment and that yeah. doctor appointment. And it seems like their life gets consumed. Yes. And so I use that as an opportunity. And I pray specifically that God would send a doctor, a nurse, a mm-hmm. technician, yes a pharmacist, something like that, that they have to come in contact with just to open a door or, or speak something. Because, you know, I, I, I can, you know, Jesus wasn't welcome, you know, and that's kind of how you feel sometimes. So I'm like, well, okay, who's your sphere of influence right now? And so let's just pray that there's so many, you know, good spirit filled pharmacists and technicians and nurses and doctors and, there's some really bold in their face. So I'm just like, God, use one of them to, yeah. to reach them if yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah. And then you also have to have faith mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. the Lord will do it. Because mm-hmm. as you are walking in the light, mm-hmm. they will see that light on you and it mm-hmm. draws them in. Mm-hmm. So as far as like my family, mm-hmm. they see the changes in me. They see the change 
from me being in your ministry and it draws them even closer and they want to know like okay what is this on her right. what's going on with you so I just keep the faith that the light will just be even brighter yeah drop sure. off just like the shadow yes, right you yes. know yes. drop off right <laughs> don't you just wish sometimes that you know Peter's shadow would just kind of drop off on some of your yes. family yes. members <laughs> I know I know but I tell you, to be honest, um, sometimes it's it takes a lot of patience because yeah. sometimes you just want to open them up, put the word in there, just fixed. <laughs> Could we? <laughs> and, you know, you want to say this, I, can't you see? Can't you see? You know, and and that's just that waiting because of that proximity. Yes. It's, 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 it takes, it does take um, patience. You know, I think the Lord grows us up also that way as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Where, you know, patients with family members or even close friends that we're in such, such close proximity with that we see them on a daily or weekly basis or our lives are interconnected. Uh, it's not like you can see them once a year or you, you know everything that's happening to them. Right. You hear the news, you hear the reports, the, the, it filters through you. Yes. You're like, there's an easy fix for this. <laughs> You know, just, you know, open your heart to the Lord. Let him come in. Let him teach you, you know, get delivered. But they're not there yet. Right. Yes. No. Yes. Right. I don't know. What discouraging things have you guys grown up with, you know? I think it's just my mom, you know, she means well and she wants the best. Of course, what mom doesn't. Um, but, of course, we grew up in the church, not really believing in Jesus, but not really trusting in him. And so as I'm going through these changes, she's watching. She's very discerning. She has a gift as well. And I want to be tell her so badly, like, you have something to do for the kingdom of God. But so she can tell all the changes in me and she sees what I'm doing, but it's like she hasn't released herself to fully receive Jesus. And she has like some unforgiveness. So just praying for her, continuing to pray for her, staying in faith, um, and continuing to do what God's doing in my life and hopes that she'll see that. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, I want you to be encouraged. You know, we're all real. We all have, you know, family members that we'd love to see saved and healed and, and delivered. And, you know, just some of the ways you can do that is just Holy Spirit convict them, renew their heart expose Jesus to them, you know, have them love Jesus and, and receive that conviction and, and keep praying for them. And yes. I hope you'll come back after the break. We're going to have some more girl chat and I hope you're enjoying this episode. Go online at kathydegrawministries.org and enter the coupon code FREEDOM for a special discount to get her brand new book, Mind Battles, Root Out Mental Triggers to Release Peace. Kathy speaks powerfully from firsthand experience after she yielded to the Holy Spirit and was totally freed from 40 years of fear and torment. Mind Battles will become your prophetic deliverance manual that will help you realize that Satan's battleground is your mind, release you from generational family curse Break off your mental strongholds and triggers. Overcome depression and fears and renew your thought patterns. Expose the enemy and counteract their attacks. Mentor you in yielding and being led by the Holy Spirit as you are used in deliverance ministry. Practice prophetic exercises to train you in waging strategic warfare. Win the day-to-day -day battles against the unseen evil forces that bombard us. Develop spiritual techniques to help you find peace and live in victory. Speak powerful warfare prayers and make breakthrough declarations that give you confidence and authority in your deliverance ministry. Become fearless and competent in spiritual warfare for yourself and for others. Go online to Kathy's webpage at kathydegrawministries.org to get her book, Mind Battles, and use the coupon code FREEDOM to receive your special discount. You can also order her Mind Battles cards based on her book to learn 14 critical things that free you from fear and move into freedom. Welcome back. I'm glad you came. I hope you're enjoying this. We've been talking about how ministry impacts extended family. And so what I was just thinking about is, you know, we're all in different walks of life and age and have children of different age. And 
how does, you know, your immediate family, how are they affected by the ministry that you do and even the ministry that you're hesitant to do? I think a, a lot of people have this, I got to wait until this happens before I launch ministry or until my children are raised or, you know, how do we, you know, fulfill God's calling right where we're at? I definitely used to have that mindset is that I'm not ready. And that's something coming alongside this ministry that I've had to root out. Like God can use you in any phase of life if you let him. Um, But as far as the changes in my immediate family has been immense, like our household is completely different as far as just the children and what they watch. Like since coming to this ministry, there's You know, I had no idea of all of the open portals that come through TV television. So that's been a huge change. But you also have a two, almost three-year-old. Yes. And so how is it like leaving her to travel and, you know? It's hard. It's hard. But then I I remember you say, what's, or what's the scripture, um, what, uh, Jesus left his um, family to do ministry. Um, You have to be willing to do that. And so that comes to my mind every time. So kind of eases it a little bit. So praying before a trip and just making sure it's the Lord's will so that you're not leaving unnecessarily. Yeah. I think a lot of women face roadblocks. You know, we... So often you see ministry as a second career, you know, later in life. But I know it was hard when we started. And there were times that my 10-year-old would just cry at night while I was gone and, you know, talking to her in a hotel. And, you know, we brought the kids when we could and made them involved. But there was definitely some resentment along the way and some relationships that, you know, with my children, you know, my children in my household, you know, as 10 and 13 and, you know, 16 at different times where my children kind of withdrew uh, because it's like mom wasn't there and serving the Lord. And I think it came back around, uh, you know, one of my daughters that was kind of like, oh, you know, you took off and, and traveled, even though she traveled with me, she's, you know, been to the Bahamas ministering with me in London and around the U.S. a lot, you know, she works for our ministry now and did definitely repaired it. But there were some hardships definitely along the way. And my son, you know, he resented us doing a homeless ministry out of our house for years. It wasn't that we did it, but, you know, it's like you took over our home and, you know, and stuff like that. But now he left us three years ago to go work for a mega church. So even we have some obstacles you know, when you train that child, they're not going to depart and they're going to come back. So, you know, it might be hard. You might have to give up some Mother's Days or, you know, birthdays and special events, but it works out. For me, it's it's been, I want to say, it, has, it hasn't been hard, as hard yet. And I think it's because it's in the beginning stages of me leaving and they're just so used to me saying okay I have this to go to and and they're okay with it what gets hard is when you're leaving and you know like today is my anniversary and I'm here today well happy anniversary Thank you. so it was a little hard at first but then it it was worth it because I know what Jesus wants me to do. It's a sacrifice. Yes, it's a sacrifice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We gotta put ourselves on the altar over and over exactly. again. Exactly. And he sacrificed for me. So why can't I do it for him? And so my family mm-hmm. understands that and and they're okay with me doing ministry. They're okay with me traveling. They're okay with it all. And it's been so help for me. And it's been very helpful in my growth and my walk with Christ to be able to do what he has called me to do. Yeah. It's great to have a good support system. It Mm -hmm. it sounds like your husband is a very, very supportive, you know, support system, because if, if you don't have that, you know, it's hard. And, and I don't say don't do it if you don't have that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, I was always, I remember just kind of being respectful to my husband and I would go up to him and say, you know, hey, I've been asked to speak in this state. Do you mind if I go? And, you know, he'd, he'd be like, well, why are you asking me? Mm. But I just wanted to be respectful and honor, right. you know, my spouse. And I think as long as you have that good communication support system, it sure does make it easier. Um, but even if you feel like um, your spouse to our viewers, you know, doesn't have that much of support, and maybe just sit down and talk to them and say, you know, I really feel God calling me to do this. And could you go back and pray about it? Or, you know, I know you might be resisting it a little bit because you want me home to cook and clean or, you know, do the laundry or make meals. I know I had an assistant once that, you know, her husband literally didn't know how to do laundry. And, you know, so she would do the laundry before, you know, she left. And I've had assistants that will make frozen TV dinners and, and stuff to make it easier because we don't want to delay our destiny. Yes, you can't. Right? We can't. You can't. You can't. It's too important. Right. It's too important. That's what I think about every time, you know, that's at the forefront of my mind, like God has given us an assignment. Yes. So we have to push forward in yes. that. And at the same time, there is also that balance where, you know, even as we are called to ministry, that we also are called to be wife Right. And a mother, yes, and that's that's true. That's a stretch of how do I be? How do I remain a good wife, a good mother, even if they haven't understood completely the nature of the call? I think that's where you know, it it gets, it does. It's a little bit tricky there, because you know, as you were saying, um, you have to prepare. You you you're basically cooking ahead of time. You're doing double the housework right. because. Exactly. You have to do that yeah. so that you can make the way for the ministry mm -hmm. for what you need to do. Um, uh, I'm blessed with a very supportive um, husband as well. That yes, you are. The call of God on my life. And it's it's a grace. Uh, and I, I really uh, appreciate that of him and of the Lord. Um, and but I remember when my children were younger um, and I was involved in my local my local church and I was involved in a, a particular part of ministry where I would have to leave the house as early as six in the morning mm. with, you know, under and three children on the seven. And I would, you know, bundle them and it was not easy. No. And some, you know, sometimes I would say, why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah. But you know what, what the Lord did wasn't easy either. No, like you right, said, yeah. you know, if he did what he did, we can do what we, we do. Can. He sacrificed, yeah. so we have to sacrifice, and hopefully mm -hmm. our family will understand that yes. sacrifice. Friends, I want to encourage you, pursue the ministry that God has for you. Don't let anything stop you. Mm -hmm.